Okay, in this video we get to see the true power of this concept of transformations when graphing. And the reason we do in this video is because in this particular function we're given some generic parent function. And the cool thing about transformations is they apply to any function, okay? Even generic parent functions where you have no formula, such as this one. Instead, you have this graph down here. So this is our parent graph y equals f of x. Okay, that's what we're going to start with. And we're trying to graph this guy here, which is our transformed function. And our transformed function is defined in terms of this f function, this graph down here. Okay, so we're going to graph this like we do any other transformations problem. We're going to establish a parent. That's already done. Check that off. We've got the parent. However, we would like to have some ordered pairs in a table maybe to keep track of this parent through all the transformations that we will come up with. Okay, so let me set those up. Now you can choose as many ordered pairs as you want. In fact, if you're not sure you have enough, you can always do more and that would be better. So I'm going to follow these very specific points on the graph because that's kind of, they're the places kind of where the graph changes. I kind of want to track those points to see what happens to them as they transform. So this first ordered pair is negative 16, 0. And you can tell in this graph the tick marks are in units of 4. And same thing on the vertical unit. Those are in tick marks of 4 because you can see the 16 there. So my first order pair is negative 16, 0. This guy down here will be negative 8, negative 8. This guy down here will be 0, negative 8. The one over here to the right will be positive 4, or sorry, positive 8, positive 4. And lastly, positive 16, positive 8. So we'll keep track of those as we do our transformations. What's missing is the transformations. So I'm going to copy my transformed function up here, because that's where you get your transformations from. OK, and the parent function, the parent function is the f part of this. So I ignore that, because I've already accounted for that with this graph. The other stuff gives me my transformations. So I go inside my parent function, which is right here, and that's going to give me my x transformations. OK, x transformations happen inside the function. And what I do is I extract what's inside, 8x, and I treat it like it's in some equation that I want to solve, like it's 8x equals any number. It doesn't matter what the number is. What's important is how do I get x by itself? And in this case, it's one step. I divide both sides by 8. And if I did that, you could see I'd have x by itself on the left. And on the right, it would still just leave behind some number. It would be different than what it was before, but we're not concerned with that. We just needed to know what to do to both sides to get x by itself. So in this case, we divided by 8. That's our x transformation. So divide by 8. But since it's an x transformation, I recommend that you say divide x by 8 so you remember to do it to x's. Okay? So that is our single x transformation. Now our y transformations, we search outside of the f, the red function, and there's nothing happening outside. There's nothing. So what that tells us is there are no y transformations. So we have one transformation to perform on this function. And so I'll do that. I'll come over to this table of values, which represents this graph, and I'll take all the x values and divide them by 8 to get my new x values. <clears throat> so when I do that, I get this new table of values. Negative 16 divided by 8 is negative 2. Negative 8 divided by 8 is negative 1. 0 divided by 8 is 0. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 16 divided by 8 is 2. And my y values do not change because my transformation says divide x by 8. And that's it. So now these points represent my transformed function. Okay, so th these points represent g of x equals f of 8x. Now what does the graph of that look like? 
Um, to kind of show you what's happening, I'll plot these points on the same plane over here in red. So this point negative 16, 0 becomes the point negative 2, 0 way over here. Okay. This point down here, which was negative 8, negative 8, becomes negative 1, negative 8. So now that's down here. This point 0, negative 8, right, this guy right here stays at 0, negative 8. doesn't change, so it's still right where it was. The point 8, 4, this guy over here, becomes the order pair 1, 4. So it's only like right there, because 1 is right here. And finally, my last order pair, 16, 8, becomes 2, 8. So that's way up here. So my graph, let me kind of, let me see if I can zoom in on this to kind of show you what's happening. My graph is going to be straight line down, straight line over. If I can do this very well, straight line up to this point, straight line over to that point. And let's zoom back out now a little bit. What happened is, when you divide the x values by 8, your graph shrinks towards the y-axis. You're dividing that distance, that horizontal distance, the x value, such as this is at an x value of 16. If I divide that by 8, it becomes an x value of 2. Right, So it squeezed towards the y-axis. And this point right here was this point, where x is negative 16. If I divide that by 8, I get this x value of negative 2, so it's squeezed this way. So the graph is shrinking towards the y-axis. It's, it's called a horizontal shrink. By 1 eighth. Okay, it's an eighth of what it was before. So the whole graph is just compressing towards the y-axis. And this red graph is in fact the graph of this transformed function g of x. And so the red graph is the answer to this particular question. And there you have the power of transformations. We were able to do it to this funky parent function. And it doesn't matter what parent function you have, transformations always work.